the Kickstarter, like we were talking before we went live about the Kickstarter that I started during the pandemic about a story yeah. about a pandemic. <laughs> um, <laughs> is, yeah, very meta in that That's sense. through the fog. Through yes. the fog. Yeah. Yes. So And I, my, so my mind immediately goes like fog. Is that like the brain fog that you get from a pandemic or like the kind of like so, swimming through treacle kind of idea? Like it's kind or, of, it's a, it's a vision thing. So the, the idea with the, with the story and it's a story that uses the characters from our previous volume uh, series. So it's a, it's an underdog entrepreneur story. So it's about a character, Blake, and he wanted to make a business. So he's going around to different neighborhoods, pulling together his business team. Um, so it's a meta story about our own journey and like pulling the people we needed, uh, that kind of thing. So they're going to go to the jungle, which is like the big city. Like if uh, you can imagine London, like is a big city, you go and prove yourself. So as everything was happening during the pandemic, uh, I just thought I, I need I, one, I needed something to do. We needed something to uh, kind yeah. of keep the, the business and brand kind of in some kind of public eye. Um, but I thought, okay, we'll put what I'm, what I'm seeing, what I'm feeling, what I'm hearing from other people into a story because this is a story about business. Um, put that in and have these characters deal with this pandemic. So for me, a large part of it for me personally was how do you how do you keep sight of this vision that you have in this kind of time uh, and because I didn't want to do a story about like specifically about COVID-19 because our we have our own universe so it is a separate kind of universe from reality uh, I thought if it was a a fog-based pandemic so it's a fog that comes in uh, and like uh, makes people sick but it impacts the eyes because that goes to like vision literally and uh, figuratively so it kind of ties in with the themes of like how do you maintain vision in these kind of unprecedented times so that kind of fit for me so that's why it's a it's a fog so it's like a that fog of yeah. uncertainty fear self-doubt all that stuff yeah cool yeah um but the uh the thing is i i like i said wrote a story about a pandemic in a pandemic uh so personally was still going through like certain yeah. things uh and yeah it just took way longer i thought i'd get it done like last december uh, i'm now looking to like <laughs> december 2021 and it's only just uh done so um i'm very th thankful to have that uh wrapped up it's been a good process i think the first thing for me is that the when I started the Kickstarter, I thought it was going to be a 24 page book. I was like, it's going yeah. to be 24 pages, going to yeah, just yeah. quick to the point. And then I yeah. started actually writing it and realized actually yeah. there's more to say. So 24 pages turned into 45. Yeah. And as you know, that's, that's a whole, that's a whole different story. You need to go back to the drawing board and do yeah. that story again. <laughs> that's like the phrase I use, let, let it percolate. And then when you let it percolate, so many more I did like so many more interesting things and connections come out mm. in a in a kind of writing process that it becomes a, a much more complex story and more interesting probably for for yes. that kind of percolation and letting it letting letting your subconscious work on it as you said like let that let that kind of um the problem of telling the story be sort of solved by like a sort of slower intuitive kind of yeah bubbling underneath kind of thing and then you start nailing it down when you when you exactly when you bring it to the surface yeah i, I think i've had something similar with ends well it was <laughs> okay. and yeah exactly this is 20 pages i thought that was going to be it and then i've got like i thought oh this is probably i probably got a lot more material to mine here like my family that side of the family they're quite eccentric and there's a lot okay. there and other people in my family have talked about turning it into either a soap opera or a novel um and I guess that's what I'm doing. I was just yeah. like, <laughs> just running with it. And it just turns out there's a lot Draw. to mine there. Yeah. yeah. Like they say, write what you know. And like, when, yeah. like if you're living through a pandemic and you write in the pandemic, you, you're writing what you know and it becomes intricate and nuanced. Exactly. It's something similar is happening with my, with this like family okay. situation that I'm trying to describe. <laughs> and I started oh. taking like different perspectives on it. Like the second one switches to my gran is my, the crisis involved my gran and uh, a vagrant that she took in mm. who started hoarding uh, lots of junk on a farm that she she lived on oh, wow. um yeah yeah kind of crazy farm where she had lots <laughs> of horses, horses and dogs 
Um, and so the second one comes to how the dogs coped with the crisis and then or the sense of like a lot of them either were like rehomed or put down and then same with the, the other animals she had. Yeah. And it was about like finding hope in that. So like the, the, the good ending. And I found one character, one of the dogs to, to follow through who, who sort of gets rescued from the situation. It's a much better life. So that opens up a strand. And the third one is more like it's the family reminiscing on, on, um, on a, on a funeral. Wow. From like, yeah, like from many years ago, but the kind of warmth of it, like it's like it got the, it's got the character of kind of a informal conversation among the family, some arguments, some, some, um, poignant reminiscences, but, but it's like a, like, you know, like a wake rather than a funeral, you, you celebrate okay. someone's life. It's yeah. that for my, for my granddad who, who, who was in many ways the enabler of this crazy situation which I'm still describing. And so he's a big part of it. It's like the keystone in, in the, in the story arc is, is oh, that, really? is that third point, which is all, all related to sort of my granddad and family history, like looking back into um, how it came about. So yeah, letting it percolate sometimes it just becomes like, it just comes it sort out, of yeah. brings it out. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Lord Paladin uh, in the chat says uh, the creativity exploded, which is, pretty much yeah. what happens is you give it enough time uh, and uh, creativity explodes I think the other thing that I found with with Sirius um, through the fog is is the ending uh, changed and not to give away the ending but in terms of like the, the overall message um, because like I said it, it was it, the kickstart was started at a time when we felt collectively that this pandemic will be over by the end of the year and then when it when it was clear that it wasn't going to be uh, the ending of the story kind of changed where it wasn't about the getting to the solution. It was about being able to deal with any solution almost. Yeah. And I thought that was a better, uh, better yeah. message to, to resilience. Work right. And that, it, that's, it, that's exactly is that, yeah. is that resilience. So the, then knowing that then some of the earlier bits in the story needed to change and some of the messages that came out changed because of it. So it was yeah. definitely an explosion of, <laughs> of ideas, creativity, all that stuff. Yeah, you find the connections, you find out it's, it's about this, but it's about this. Hi there, I'm Nigel from My Matter. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the other great videos we have on the channel. You can also check out our universe of manga and characters at mymatter.com. We'll see you soon.